Okay, so I got a question from a student recently about applying like dissolves like. So you see this topic I have here, applying like dissolves like. And the questions, I think, have all been in exactly the same format. It, they, they go like this. For each solute, click the button under the better solvent. Okay, so here's the solute and here's the solvent, right? And so we have to say, which is, this, which is iodine going to dissolve in better? Which is it going to dissolve in better? So uh, I've set up my whiteboard over here to sort of walk through this a little bit, right? We're applying like dissolves like, and we've got some solute and some solvent. Which is which? Well, it turns out <clears throat> it doesn't really matter uh, which is which, but since the terms could be a little bit uh, confusing, let's go ahead and set this up. Let's say that the solvent is the green spheres and the solute is the red X's. And we're going to say that the solvent is defined by whichever there's more of, right? So let's say that there's more greens. I, by the way, I didn't even count these, so I guess there are more here. But you won't always be able to tell, right? If you're just showing a snapshot of, say, uh, oh, I don't know, electro electrostatic potential maps or whatever, you might not be able to tell. And so the question stem will just say, which is the solvent. And the reason the solvent is the solvent is because there's more of it, all right? And the solute, conversely, is the solute because there's less of it, all right? So let's say this is the solvent and this is the solute. So what do you expect is going to happen? If this is the solute, solvent, and this is the solute, you can tell by my use of these terms, solvent and solute, that we're going to dissolve something, right? So what's going to happen? What's the picture down here going to look like? All right, so I've got that all set up. That's what it's going to look like. You're going to have a bunch of the solvent. So the solvent, the green spheres are still touching each other, and the red X's are not. They're 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 now surrounded by green green spheres, or green O's. All right. So what's going on here? What do we have to understand in order to be able to make predictions? Which is what you're being asked to do. You're being asked to to understand like the the, the phrase. Where am I here? like dissolves like and you're being asked to make some kind of an application uh, of that right so here's what's going on the it turns out that in order to get from here from from the beginning to the end to the solution we've got to interrupt these little interactions right x is surrounded by x and x loves it because things love to be together right so the, there's all these interactions that, and you've got to be able to, you've got to interrupt those. What are those, inter, what are those interactions? What are they? They are intermolecular forces. Okay. We've got to be able to interrupt those. Right and replace them with, look at this. I've got to replace them with that. Okay, so how is that gonna happen? It's gonna happen if the strength of these, is, of these interactions is similar to the strength of those interactions. That's, what's, that's how it's gonna happen, okay? Now I wanna add one more uh, point to this. Let's get rid of these and say this is really the main point. More polar stuff is dissolved by more polar stuff. That's what's going on. The more polar solvent is going to be dissolved in the more polar, I don't know if I said that right, the more polar solute is going to be dissolved in the more polar solvent, right? So our task is simple. It's much easier than it looks. Our task now is to go through these solutes and solvents and say how polar they are. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to take iodine. This is not—I'm not on my whiteboard anymore, so I got to—I got to transpose these over. I2 
and it looks like this is, oh, I don't know, a bunch of carbon hydrogens, right? And I gotta say, what's the intermolecular forces that I too can exhibit? And what are the intermolecular forces this guy can exhibit? And what are the intermolecular forces that guy can exhibit? Okay, and the more polar. So I'm gonna transpose these over to my whiteboard and I'm going to, um, let's go here, where am I? First of all, I2, and then CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. I think there were that many of them. Oh, there were four of them. Okay, so it's similar. It doesn't matter how many, exactly if I get the right structure. It's a, similar. I'm, I'm missing a, a CH2, but all right. And the other one was H2O, right? Okay, so let's go through here then, then and say. What are the intermolecular forces that I2 can exhibit? All right, so I2 is, it looks like this. Is this polar or nonpolar? This is nonpolar, right? Um, and so since it's nonpolar, there's no dipole forces, there's no. Um, Gosh, there's no hydrogen bonding. There's no um, ion dipole, right? It's simply going to be dispersion forces. That's all you have available here, okay? Now, what about what about this guy? Well, the same thing. There's no hydrogen bonding. There's no uh, dipole forces, right? There's no ions in here. So dispersion is the only thing that we have available here, right? That's it. And what about this guy? Well, dispersion uh, is for everybody, right? Dispersion forces. Uh, this is also gonna have hydrogen bonding, right? And this is uh, also gonna have dipole interactions, dipole-dipole interactions, okay? So if this guy, if, if iodine has a choice of water or I've drawn propane out here but I think it was hexane that was here which is it going to be it's going to be this guy right can you see that because there's no real good polar interactions uh, that has to that have to be interrupted in order for iodine to go in there and there are no good uh, polar interactions waiting for it when it gets there all right so that's what we're doing here with applying like dissolves like. Let's do one more example and then we'll and then we'll be done with it. The other example was let's go down here to this one. I did this one in class. Let's do it again here. So this I think is called urea. Been a while since I've seen that one. It is uh, NH2, NH2, right? And the other, I think it was dimethyl sulfoxide. My days in the lab, the value of my days in the lab is coming back to me. DMSO, yep, that's dimethyl sulfoxide. That's a solvent that's used, I don't know. We used it as a solvent to store uh, antibodies in, in a biochemistry lab I worked in for a while. DMSO. I'm not going to say how much I liked it or didn't like it. Okay, it's a little bit negative. That's why I'm not a biochemist. All right, so let's 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 uh, identify the the intermolecular forces first of all for these, and then we'll decide which. Whoops, whoops, lost my pen there for a second. Then we'll decide which to. Uh, solvent is the better uh, solvent for urea. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is, I see a hydrogen that's bonded to an electronegative element, so hydrogen bonding is a possibility. Dispersion is always a possibility, right? And I also see a polar bond, so dipole-dipole interactions are a possibility, okay? Um, those are the intermolecular forces that urea experiences. Well, I see a polar bond here. It's not as polar, I think, because sulfur is in the same group as oxygen. But there's a polar bond here, but there's no hydrogen bonding, right? Because there are no hydrogens that are bonded to electronegative elements. Carbon is not an electronegative element, so this is not hydrogen bonding. 
So I see I've got dispersion possible and dipole. Dipole interactions are possible for, for uh, DMSO. What about water? Okay, well dispersion is always possible, right? But it looks like hydrogen bonding is the magic one here. Magic, right? Because you've got hydrogen that's bonded to an electronegative element. And then you also have dipole interactions, okay? So can you see that these electromagnetic uh, intermolecular forces are more like these intermolecular forces? Uh, that means that this guy is going to win and not this guy, okay? So water is going to be the solvent for urea and not DMSO. Now, I want to say finally, I want to emphasize a point which I made, I think, at the, on the first slide. Let me get rid of this and go back, I think, to my first slide. I think it was here. Um, I did not write that down, but I would like to write it down now. And I would like to say that you, you need to understand that polar forces, intermolecular forces, dominate. They dominate. So if you have, if you have the capacity to... Oh, I don't know. Um, if you have the capacity to to push along a solution process by uh, polar okay, polar forces dominate. So go back over here to this one. It turns out you might say, "Wow, dispersion forces." Look at dispersion forces uh, are in all of these. Where am I here? Right? And you go, well, that, should, that ought to be good enough. What I would say dispersion forces are by far the weakest. Right? So if you have dispersion forces play almost no role in this. They only play a role if there's nothing else going on. Right? So again, the polar forces, the, the more electrostatic um, forces, uh, forces uh, dominate here and that could sometimes be the key uh, to the solution so all right hope that's helpful look forward to talking to you more about it